Well, as we said, this development not only raises issues about the very concept of plagiarism and ethics in academia, but also the manner in which uh, Mr. Penthal was handled by the courts. Is there a mechanism in academia to deal with such complaints? Joining me to discuss that uh, in the studio, uh, I have Professor Kale Chopra, who's uh, President of the Society for Scientific Values and the ex-director of IIT Kharagpur, uh, Professor Mridula Mukherjee from uh, JNU, who's a professor of modern history, Dr. Rajesh Chha, who's a member of the Academic Council and also joining me uh, live from his residence is Praveen Singh who is a lawyer for the complainant, Professor Parthasarthi. Uh, Praveen Singh, I want to actually uh, open this debate with you. Can you give us uh, specifically what the complaints are? What, what are you taking uh, Mr. Pendle to court on? See, uh, what happened, uh, Professor Parthasarthi who is the complainant in the case he had conducted some experiment in his lab uh, prior to 1999. Now the findings which he obtained in his lab, now this is being claimed uh, by Professor Pentel that he obtained the same result. The progress report he files of the year 2001 and 2002. Basically he says that he conducted an experiment and he has obtained the same result. Now same result is not possible in any even if it is conducted by a same scientist, it, the empirical results will vary. Okay. So what he did basically, he copied the entire outcome of the findings of Professor Padasarthi conducted before 1999 and he gives it as a report in two, later on 2002 that this is the result which I have obtained by conducting the experiment. However, he doesn't conduct the experiment. He doesn't have any MOU by which the genetic material has been taken. He doesn't uh, observe any biosafety norms. So he commits basically plagiarism along with the intellectual theft. The entire data is being uh, misused and okay. produced before so, the uh, Department of... Yeah. So what's alerted you essentially what you're saying is that uh, two processes can't actually have the same result and that's something uh, that uh, has been central to your case against Deepak Pentel as well. I want to ask you, Professor Chopra, because you've also conducted inquiries into past instances of, uh, of such complaints in the university. Do you think this argument by the plaintiff uh, is, uh, has some merit? Yes. Well, we have investigated this case also. We have heard uh, Professor Pentel and uh, we have heard uh, uh, Professor Partha Sarthi who made the complaint. Um, well, uh, when we discuss it, I have a large number of people with me who, from different areas, some of them didn't really feel very uh, sure that it was a very serious case. There is no doubt about it that uh, Professor Pentel's student actually are involved, postdoctoral fellows are involved. Actually, all professors have people who do research for them, namely students and so on. So some students, uh, and uh, indeed in many cases, plagiarism really occurs through the students, okay. Uh, but then uh, one expects a supervisor to be uh, well alert and, and if he takes interest in that, he should know it. Uh, there is a case, yes, yes uh, and uh, we, f we felt uh, uh, some apologies from, from Professor Pentel that he did not uh, uh, supervise properly, mm -hmm. uh, did not guide properly because that's also one of the responsibilities of a supervisor right. because these are like children that you are trying to nurture and uh, um, this has been misused. So, but whatever happened, I, I think it's a bit too serious. Okay, uh, that, that, I, I want to actually take that forward with uh, Professor Mukherjee as well. Um, this sort of arrest, detention, sending him to Tihar jail, getting a stay from the High Court. Uh, Professor Chopra is making the point that very often uh, these instances take place at the student level and the supervisor needs to be more vigilant about such things. Having said that, that may be the case in many instances. Today's action by the courts, what are your reactions to it? Well, I'm sorry to say uh, that I think I'm appalled uh, to hear about this. Certainly on an issue of plagiarism, firstly there is, it's an allegation. Mm -hmm. Obviously the university had some occasion to go into it. I don't know exactly what were the findings, but Professor Chopra has indicated something. But I cannot imagine how you would order an arrest for a charge of plagiarism. Clearly, it's not an offense that requires a person to be removed because that person is a threat to society. 
you know, you order arrest and things like that when the person can be some kind of menace. Right. Or he can distort something. He can uh, distort the evidence or, or manipulate the evidence. How can somebody manipulate evidence which was 15 years Published ago? Already. It's already there in the public domain. Hmm. So on plagiarism count, I don't see how. Hmm. Uh, and so I do not know what the court actually went into and on what basis it, it gave this uh, uh, judgment which seems to me to be not in order in terms of what I understand of the law. Okay. I mean to the, to the extent that I know this. Right. And it also seems to me that uh, uh, one is hearing that there were associated charges hmm. which were connected to some uh, material mm -hmm. uh, which was there in the lab and uh, when he was the vice chancellor and radioactive material, there's a whole lot of stuff. Now, I personally think that whether it is responsibility as a supervisor, we are all guiding research, there is a point to which you can actually prevent things. Now we have sophisticated tools, right. you know, which catch through software. Hmm. All our theses now have to go through that software mm -hmm. uh, so that plagiarism can be caught, you know. And secondly, as an administrator, you often have to sign on things where you cannot possibly be checking the last detail. So I think in situations like that, so for a vice chancellor to be put into jail, hmm. I mean, you know, and let me also say that, uh, though I'm not from Delhi University, but I've had the pleasure of knowing Professor Pentel as a fellow colleague at coming to JNU quite often. I served with him on a selection committee for vice chancellors. I know his reputation is exceptional. And so it's very sad hmm. that almost a defamation of a person at a very peak point in their career right. is happening. It's very sad. In fact, I'm sure there are other ways these issues can be handled. Surely there are easier, more okay. genteel <laughs> ways of right. handling issues. Okay, uh, rather than going to the extreme of tarnishing a reputation uh, is what you're saying. Absolutely. All right, Rajesh, you come in on this because there's a couple of points. One is how you deal with these charges and these allegations. At what level do you investigate them? And how harshly or not can you treat somebody who up until this point seems to have had an impeccable academic uh, record. That's one. The second uh, that Professor Mukherjee is making also is, uh, and as well Professor Chopra made, about students and how it's not always possible for the supervisor to check every last word. Yet at the same time, the supervisor is finally held accountable for what comes out because their name is also published uh, along and with those the of the they students the and they also get the benefit. Exactly. So your views, Rajesh, are coming on this. No, no, certainly these, this is very important issue as far as uh, academic ethics are concerned and integrity in research is concerned. And our university is quite serious about it. Uh, let me share one fact. When uh, Pintal Saab himself was vice chancellor, a uh, teacher lost the job on account of such allegation uh, when he was uh, vice chancellor himself. Only thing is why such things are happening, we have to take short term and long term view. Right now, the way we are responding to such a serious issue is uh, quite ad hoc in nature, like hmm. uh, inquiries are done, done in very uh, ad hoc manner, in a very specific manner. There is no regulatory framework as such. So in the short run, we have to if we want to deal with this issue, because if you see, we have to go for the international standard. We have to maintain the credibility in the research. Right. We will have to tackle this issue, yeah. but in a very systematic manner, one. Secondly, we will have to take some systemic view of the whole thing, the okay. way academics is working, hmm. the way the academic uh, academics is being interfered by the politicians and bureaucrats, which we have to look into.